Hi, everybody. Blake here from Flowcast. It's about three minutes to the top of the hour, and we are getting ready to start our webinar. To make sure that everything is working properly, I'd love if uh, one or more of you would give me a hint that lets me know that everything is working. So I've got a question for you, and you could put this into the Q&A. What, what did you do on your summer vacation? I would love to hear and find out from those of you who are willing to share. Uh, I know that the summer is not over, but this is our um, last webinar of the summer here at Flowcast, so appropriate question to ask. I'll, I'll start. Um, I took my son bowling for the first time this summer. Not exactly uh, an exciting trip, but um, he had a blast. We've got Mai. Mai, thanks for joining us today. Mai is, uh, she said, lazy, dot, 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 smiley face. Taking it easy is always uh, nice during the summer. Susan went to Philly to see you too. Uh, well, that, that definitely tops it so far. Um, Taylor wants to know, uh, what is the definition of a vacation? That's a good question. Sometimes it seems that we in the accounting world don't exactly get a lot of vacation. Uh, but hey, maybe that's something we can talk about today. Uh, improve your best practices for the month and close, and, and maybe you can finally take that vacation that you've always wanted to take. Um, somebody is saying that the sound sounds weird. Um, if you're having trouble with your audio, sometimes it helps to refresh your browser um, or to check your audio settings. Um, and if you're continuing to have trouble with your audio, go ahead and put that um, into the Q&A and we'll get you sorted out. We've got some folks on the back end that can troubleshoot. Oh, wow, tons of answers here. Um, <laughs> it's going to be hard for me to get to all of these. We've got actually um, over 500 registrants on the webinar today, so really excited to have you all here. Somebody went, uh, let's see, we've got wine tasting, Hawaii for 10 days, crochet blankets for veterans in the hospital. That's giving back to the community. Um, somebody worked on their, let's see, CPA continuing ed requirement, Thomas. And did I mention wine tasting? That's one of my favorite things to do. Timothy is going to Seattle slash Portland. Timothy, um, maybe I'll run into you there. I'm going in August to see my parents in Seattle for a week. Brittany went on a cruise. Uh, Stephanie has been swimming. Awesome. Thank you, guys. It seems like everything is working great. And it is now 11 a.m., so we're going to get underway. Welcome to our webinar, Best Practices for the Month and Close on Oracle NetSuite Strategies and Proven Tips for a Faster and More Accurate Close. My name is Blake Oliver. I am the Senior Product Marketing Manager here at Flowcast. And before I joined Flowcast, I worked at Armanino, a large uh, CPA and consulting firm here in California, where I was a manager in the outsourced accounting department. And I was actually a Flowcast uh, prospect before I uh, joined Flowcast. That's how I found out about the software, and I liked it so much I ended up working here. A bit of housekeeping before we get started. One, all participants are muted, so you don't have to worry about us hearing you. Please submit questions via the Q&A module. How to earn CPE. Uh, you have to watch the whole presentation. Answer at least three of the five polling questions and complete the uh, course evaluation. Let's get back to this slide here. Uh, and then once you've completed the course evaluation, which is on your screen there, you'll be able to download your certificate. And the certificate will appear in the CPE module. So if you're having any trouble um, locating that, there's a menu bar at the bottom of your screen. You can click on CPE. If you can't find the course evaluation, it's that green icon at the far right uh, of the bottom uh, menu with the uh, pencil icon. All right, and um, regarding questions, please submit those throughout. We'll do our best to answer those at appropriate times. Uh, and if we can't get to those at the end, we will also uh, follow up with you via email. Learning objectives today. Number one, maximize team efficiency by connecting your people, process, documents, and reconciliations all in the cloud using NetSuite. Leverage the unique strengths of a multi-generational workplace with cloud-based tools. And three, Identify opportunities for ongoing improvements with actionable analytics using NetSuite and closed management software. So first, you might be wondering, who is Flowcast? 
Flowcast is closed management software created by accountants for accountants. Like I said, I used to be an accountant in an outsourced accounting team. We have accountants in every department at Flowcast. We believe that's really important to build software that accountants want to use. We help accounting teams close faster and more accurately. And we have now over 400, mostly mid-sized customers, rapidly approaching 500. And we're really, really proud to have the highest customer satisfaction of all finance software on G2 Crowd. Two of our three co-founders are former auditors, big four auditors. Mike worked at Ernst & Young. And uh, Chris, who uh, uh, runs our customer support team, uh, worked at uh, KPMG. And we've, we're really pleased to have some awesome companies closing the books every day on Flowcast. I'll just mention a few of them. One of my favorites, Grubhub. I spend an unreasonable amount of money on, on ordering food on Grubhub. Also, can't forget the Golden State Warriors. Zscaler just had an amazing IPO. DocuSign, Zillow, Indeed, Twilio, Okta, Ring Central. The list goes on and on. But enough about me, enough about Flowcast. Let's get to our expert guests today. We're really pleased to have on the webinar Paul Clayton. He's the VP of Consulting Services at FMT Consultants. Paul has been with FMT for 18 years and is responsible for overseeing their solution delivery teams. Paul, thank you for joining us today. Great to be here. Thanks, Blake. And we also have Amy Vallandingham. She's a CPA and the VP of Finance at Newport Group. Um, Amy, thank you so much for coming here and offering your perspective as both a NetSuite and a Flowcast customer. Thanks, Blake. I'm excited to be here. So, um, Amy, I know that our, I'm excited and I know that our attendees are excited to hear your point of view because you are a VP Finance who has successfully moved to the cloud and you're, you're managing a team um, using cloud ERP uh, add-ons. Um, I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind taking a few minutes and telling us a little bit about your background, what Newport Group does, and, and what, it, what your team is like. Okay. Um, I am a CPA. Um, I got my um, license while at Ernst & Young and um, have primarily been working at um, – high growth companies. I joined Newport almost two years ago. Um, we have had a lot of acquisitions in the last three to four years. And um, because of that, the finance team is spread out um, in over four different offices, um, East Coast, West Coast, and Central. Um, and we've had a lot of um, issues, obviously, managing the close with remote staff. Um, so that's one of the great things I like about not only NetSuite, it's cloud-based, but also Flowcast that allows me to manage my team effectively. That's great to hear. Um, so you're using, obviously, uh, NetSuite and Flowcast. Are there any other cloud applications that um, you're leveraging to manage that remote team that you could share with us? Sure. Um, so um, we're using Box.com as a result of the Flowcast um, integration, which has been really helpful because um, – I'm sure, as you know, servers across multiple um, locations can be really slow for large Excel files. We are also implementing um, an AR solution called um, YayPay, and we're in the process of doing that right now. Um, and that's in, just going to help us um, streamline our collection processes um, to clients and for their relationship managers to reach out to clients when something becomes past due. Awesome. Well, I'm very much looking forward to talking to you more about your experience in the cloud, and and we'll uh, we'll get back to th that shortly. Thank you, Amy. Mm -hmm. So, here at Flowcast, we like to think of the financial close or the month end close as having four elements, and that's how we've structured this presentation today. So. Our first element is people. These are all of the people that work for you. You cannot have a close or a financial close. You can't get anything done as a manager without great people and great staff. So we'll talk a little bit about how do you build a team that's going to be successful uh, in the cloud on a, on a cloud ERP such as NetSuite. Uh, and um, in, in the case of Amy, um, you know, uh, teams that are more and, and more frequently dispersed across multiple offices or even working from home. 
Then we'll talk about process. Um, Paul is going to share some tips for uh, NetSuite, um, the close in NetSuite. Um, and really great to have his expertise here um, in terms of nailing down your process. And we'll talk about ways you can also streamline and hopefully speed up your close. Then we'll talk about documents. Um, I will share some templates that we have at Flowcast and some recommended best practices for how to store your work papers and your uh, supporting documents, how to structure those templates, uh, and how to get review notes out of email. And finally, we're going to have Paul come back, and he's going to lead discussion on improving reconciliations. When is it best to do a reconciliation in NetSuite versus Excel? How can we optimize and, and speed up especially uh, that process? So before we get started, let's go ahead and get to our first polling question. And I'll, I will leave this open for about um, 30 seconds. Um, and the polling question is, which answer most closely describes your firm's accounting technology environment? So here at Flowcast, we have come up with sort of a methodology for uh, uh, determining how far along teams are in terms of moving to the cloud. So stage zero is you're not in the cloud at all. Um, most teams are actually not at stage zero, they've moved on, they're using at least one financial cloud app, that would be stage one. So let's say you've got NetSuite, but no other applications in the cloud, that would be stage one. Or perhaps you're using um, Flowcast, but you're not using any, uh, maybe your ERP is desktop based, that would be stage one. Stage two is you have multiple financial cloud applications and you've got some integrations going on. So um, maybe you've got an AR tool that integrates with your ERP in the cloud. Um, but you've also got a mix of some desktop stuff. And stage three, that's the final um, stage that not too many teams have gotten to. That's where you've got all of your financial applications in the cloud, and they are substantially integrated, meaning you're not doing much manual data entry at all. I'm going to go ahead and close this poll now. A few more seconds for everybody to get their answers in. All right. And it looks like we've got most of our teams in stage two, meaning they've got more than one financial cloud app and they've got some integration going on. And that matches with the results of a survey that we recently did at Flowcast. We found that about 70% of, of teams um, are in stage two. What's interesting about this uh, webinar in particular is that uh, stage three, um, um, we have actually 20% of teams that are using all cloud-based financial apps, and that's about double what we saw in the survey. And I should say that 70% number is distorted here because we had um, we had some other uh, results going on. But basically, the takeaway is most teams are in stage two, not too many teams in stage zero anymore, and a few that have gotten to stage three. So um, hopefully, we can uh, help get those of you who are in stage zero and one moving toward the cloud. Now it's time for the first element of the close, building your team, that's the people. So to set the stage, I'm sure that most accounting managers or controllers or CFOs are aware that it's getting harder and harder to hire accountants, find people who can uh, work successfully and will stick around. Um, this number here, 1.9%, this is the unemployment rate for accountants and auditors in Q1 of 2018 based on a report from Robert Half that was uh, using um, uh, data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So the unemployment rate for accountants, it's, it's half what uh, it is for, the, um, um, for everybody overall. So we're under 4% now in the general economy, but accountants have it really good. So this is you know, essentially, might as well be zero as far as uh, most accountants are concerned. You can basically walk out the door and get another job somewhere else. So a lot of the discussion around people has to do with, well, how do I keep people happy on my team? How do I keep them from leaving and going somewhere else? And also, how do I uh, deal with you know, the issue of rising salaries? Are there things that I can do to give my team better work-life balance? Can technology be part of that uh, in order to uh, keep them on my team and, and keep them happy? So just wanted to set the stage with that. Let's get to our uh, first question, and uh, this is for Amy. Amy, you were talking uh, about um, you know managing a team that's remote, um, being on NetSuite, on Flowcast, on uh, implementing a few other applications, and I wanted to know, um, and I'm sure our attendees are really interested, especially those who are in stage zero or stage one, what are the challenges that you had switching to cloud ERP, and you know, do you have any lessons learned, anything you can offer um, those who are, are looking to make the switch or in process? Um, yes. So 
the biggest um, thing I recommend is really think through your end game and what it is you actually want the ERP to look like. We, um, the people that are in the position um, and set up NetSuite didn't probably think about um, the long run and how many acquisitions we're going to be doing, so the scalability wasn't thought of initially. Um, and the other thing I recommend that was a challenge for us was um, training because we did have people um, all over the place. Um, just make sure that um, my team specifically prefers to learn um, face-to-face so maybe learn what your team, their preferred method of learning is, and um, kind of gear the training that way. Makes sense. And I think you mentioned previously that you know you had um, in making the switch, you had a number of team members that had never used NetSuite before, and and they had to get used to the idea of working in the cloud. Do you have any, um, you know, were there any issues in in getting those personnel trained up? Did did you lose anybody? Um. We did not lose anyone. Um, I'd say the training was slow, and I think there's still people that are learning things. We actually brought in um, a NetSuite um, training person to come in and teach us um, certain aspects because we knew that we weren't utilizing the um, program as we could. So I think that really helped a lot. But really, it's just best practices and sharing what you've learned and um, kind of your experimenting with the system. Um, with the rest of the team. And I really recommend sandboxes so you can go and, and play with things and not worry about messing things up. Oh, yeah. So for those who aren't familiar, actually, um, Paul, maybe you can jump in and explain, you know, how, how do you, as a consultant who implements NetSuite, how do you like to train folks? What do you recommend people go through? And, and do you use that sandbox environment? Uh, yeah, thanks, Blake. So. <clears throat> Uh, training is incredibly important, and as Amy mentioned, everybody learns in different ways. Um, you know, for me, once the team has been initially trained on NetSuite, it's really about having effective collaboration tools and up-to-date documentation that users can leverage at any time. Um, there's NetSuite Online help, or there's Suite Answers, uh, but optimally, really, your own documentation that's more tailored to your specific business processes one way that I see helping, and, and the sandbox is a very critical element of that. So again, as Amy mentioned, you can get in there and you can you can process transactions without um, without affecting your production environment. I think it's also important to know and to coordinate with your solution administrator or a solution partner uh, to understand really the new release or upgrade cadence uh, and, the, and the features associated to those upgrades. Um, for NetSuite, uh, it's twice per year. Uh, and there may be features within the new release that will address a current challenge or optimize a process. Awesome. So when we're training staff and we're getting them set up on NetSuite, we have to assign them user roles. And I know that in NetSuite, um, and it, it can be pretty complicated, right? Um, so. Paul, are there any best practices uh, for, on an ongoing basis for managing those user roles? Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, as we all know, organizations flex and change over time, so a periodic review of user accounts and related permissions ensures that only your current and active users um, have the appropriate access to the system. Um, furthermore, when you talk about organizations that need to be SOX compliant, they need to be able to rely on their solution to facilitate things like segregation of duties and mitigate risks uh, to protect themselves against the potential for fraudulent activities. So there are some simple methods uh, that can be used um, for managing or reviewing user roles and permissions on a regular basis. Um, you can do role analysis through safe searches, so the safe search will essentially is a report where you can pull on the user name or the account, uh, the status of that account, um, assign roles and permissions, and then changes and updates to those roles and permissions as well can be exposed on the, on the safe search. You can also use NetSuite tools to analyze the configuration of the user role, right? What permissions have been added to that role? Um, typically, you want a clear distinction between those roles in terms of permissions. So NetSuite can help you facilitate that uh, uh, that difference analysis between the roles. 
And then really I recommend running your own periodic internal tests on a process cycle. So pick your procure to pay cycle or your order to cash cycle and run that process through your sandbox, your test environment, uh, and, and do that uh, to, to just ensure or uh, be sure that the intent of your permissions are really following through. Thanks, Paul. Amy, uh, you mentioned um, when we spoke earlier that you are managing user roles, and, and one way that you're doing that is inviting folks outside of the accounting team into NetSuite um, and other apps like Flowcast. Um, uh, so what's, what, uh, what is one way that's helping you? Um, in regards to um, Flowcast specifically, um, we have an auditor role that we use that we require our auditors to go pull the reconciliations. It just saves time um, come audit so that we don't actually have to just go pull a whole bunch of spreadsheets because they actually have the information um, at their fingertips. Um, yeah. And, um, and we do actually manage users uh, via safe searches, so it's a good tip. And I think... You, uh, you're also um, potentially looking at, at a new auditor now, right? And is that because uh, your previous auditor wouldn't wouldn't do the online access? Um, no, it's not because of that. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you're really looking for an it, auditor. That's not. Yeah. <laughs> Understood. But you're looking for an auditor who would uh, who would be able to do that, right? Because it saves your team time. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. All right, that brings us to our second polling question. Um, I'm going to leave this one open for about 30 seconds. And we're just curious to know, what is your relationship with NetSuite? Are you using NetSuite now? Are you currently implementing NetSuite? Are you thinking about purchasing NetSuite? Are you on a different ERP or accounting system and not planning to switch? Just curious, um, looking for uh, some CPE and some best practices. Are you currently using NetSuite and Flowcast together? Um, or uh, you also have the option, if you choose not to share, um, you'll still get credit, um, and the answer will not show in the results. I'm going to leave this open for a few more seconds for everybody to get their answer in. Going once, going twice. All right, let's see the answers. So it looks like, wow, 60% of you guys are using NetSuite right now, uh, and another 12% are currently implementing. 6% are thinking about it, 12% on another ERP, and uh, wow, 10% are on NetSuite and Flowcast. Thank you all for uh, coming, and, and it's great to have so many Flowcast customers on the webinar today. All right, optimizing your process, section number two of our webinar here. So this is all about the sausage making process in the month end close, right? This is where uh, all the, the dirty work happens, right? Um, and to hopefully clarify what the month-end close actually is, um, one of our product uh, managers created a diagram, and I thought it would be fun to share with you guys today. So here's how we view the month-end close at Flowcast. We view it as a process to, one, verify and adjust account balances at period end, two, over on the right, produce reports representative of the company's true financial position to inform stakeholders. So. We go from over on the left at the bottom, the general ledger, and we've got to get all the way over to the right for budgeting, reporting, audit, all that good stuff. And all that stuff that happens in the middle, consolidations, intercompany eliminations, reconciliations, flux analysis, adjusting journal entries, that little cycle there is something that a lot of people uh, who haven't worked in an accounting department don't know about. Um, and it is a lot of work that has to happen very, very quickly. So that was the inspiration for this webinar today, and we're lucky to have uh, Paul here to help explain some of the best practices for uh, getting all of that stuff done on NetSuite. So, Paul, I'm going to hand the floor over to you. All right. Thanks, Blake. So uh, NetSuite's built-in period close checklist uh, which is found in the Manage Accounting Periods area of NetSuite, and you see it on your, your screen there, is a helpful guide on the proper sequence of steps to a successful period or year-end financial close, but it's not meant to be that full comprehensive list of all your close activities. Um, in fact, this close checklist is really just a small part in what is a much larger period close process, as this screen's primary purpose is to control really the status of period and tasks and accounting periods, those different statuses being unlocked or open, 
uh, versus locked versus you know a fully closed accounting period. It really depends on where you're at in your closed cycle. So moving through, and in addition to you know posting and applying your outstanding transactions, uh, adjustments and other accruals should be recorded prior to starting the NetSuite period close process. So really we start with, we start the process with, as most of you know, recording AP, recording AR, invoices, credit memos, uh, customer payments, making sure that we have a solid AP and AR aging. And then we move through the rest of the, of the, of the modules and the subledgers, such as inventory and fixed assets, and get those closed as well. Um, once we've done that, then we move into our adjustments and our accruals that are typically posted prior to the close. So those include our liabilities, vacation and sick pay accruals, uh, mark-to-market adjustments, or fair market value, uh, expense accruals, those types of things. Depreciation and amortization. And you know, just a note, a lot of us, I, I see a lot of us maintaining our amortization schedules external to the system in Excel spreadsheets. Those amortization schedules can be attached to the actual transaction and maintained against the actual transaction for things like prepaid expenses, insurance, licensing fees, and things like that. So recording these adjustments, obviously it requires journal entries, entering journal entries in NetSuite. Um, often this can be a little bit tedious when it comes to getting them recorded and reviewed and approved quickly, but we can streamline the process by using certain features in NetSuite. And those include what we've listed there, uh, memorized transactions, so a memorized transaction uh, is something you set up to recur in NetSuite, such as a recurring journal entry. Uh, they basically eliminate data entry, and by their nature, they serve as useful reminders. Uh, that's because you set the frequency the transaction should occur, so say that might be monthly, and then the number of times it should repeat, so that might be 12 times. Um, there's also journal entry import. So with an Excel template that has maybe six or seven columns in it, including the date, the posting period, the GL account, uh, the dimension or the segment, as well as a debit credit amount, and maybe a brief description. With that template, you can um, fill it in on a uh, regular basis, periodic basis, and then import that journal entry uh, into NetSuite using the CSV import tool. And then with suite approvals, we can actually submit journal entries with a pending approval status. And then the built-in workflow engine of NetSuite handles it from there. So really the next approver is notified of the transaction being in their queue, and then transactions uh, under review can be approved or rejected. If they are rejected, the submitter is notified via email, and the transaction then, then can be edited and resubmitted for approval. And all that really can be front stage on your reminder portlet on your home page of NetSuite. So as the screenshot shows, we've got a reminder portlet there with one memorized transaction that's due and two journal entries that need to be approved. So I can drill right from my home page into those links and address those transactions that need attention. So once you've booked all your adjusting entries, now you're ready to essentially close the accounting period in NetSuite. So the purpose of this task, again, we're in that same manage, uh, manage accounting periods area. Purpose of this task is really to close all the previously locked tasks in the checklist so that we prohibit the, the posting of transactions in the closed period. Now with the right setup and permissions, there is a close multiple periods feature that can be used. It helps accelerate the period close, really just helps us move through those closing tasks a bit faster, and then it also helps with reopening closed periods for adjustments and closing those periods after we've made the adjustments. A best practice to note here, we only want to provide a specific set of user roles access to the Manage Accounting Periods feature of NetSuite. Reason being is this is the area of the application where Period end task statuses are updated, periods are closed, they're reopened again, fiscal periods are created. So it's definitely in an area that should be locked down to mitigate risk from a production, uh, production system perspective. So after the period's closed, we can see the status in the screenshot there uh, is now marked as closed. You can see that in the top left-hand corner of the, of the NetSuite screenshot. 
And then to ensure ongoing visibility, NetSuite maintains a full audit trail of the status changes. So any unlocking or locking or closing or reopening of each accounting period uh, is tracked with username, date, time stamp, and change justification. So it's all maintained within the system. And then the final bullet point there, locking future periods. So that prevents users from entering transaction uh, transaction data and journal entries by mistake in a future period. So there's a feature within NetSuite where we can lock future periods while still maintaining an accounting period window of open periods, kind of in front of the period that you're working in. Um, and that we can really have the system maintain that window in an automated fashion, right, just through the appropriate setup of the application. So, so, Blake, that's how you close the accounting period in NetSuite. Um, I'll send it back over to you. Great. Thanks, Paul. So, as you may have noticed, the closing checklist in NetSuite is really great to have, but it's not everything. So, you're also going to need to have a closed checklist outside of NetSuite. You've got to have a place to track those non-NetSuite closed tasks. And at Flowcast, we recommend that you have a collaborative checklist. What do I mean by collaborative? Well, when we talk to accounting teams that are looking to improve their process, we find that many of them have checklists. Um, how would you get the work done if you didn't? But those checklists are really maintained by individuals. So the person responsible for a particular task or group of tasks, um, you know, accounts receivable, has their own checklist that's detailed. And somebody else has a different checklist that's formatted in a different way. Um, now, that, that works as long as that person is still at your company and as long as they make a, a good checklist, but quality can vary. And really, if you want to swap somebody in and out, um, give somebody else a task, somebody goes on vacation, it can be challenging. So that's where a collaborative checklist comes into play. Uh, so the first step in streamlining your process uh, outside of NetSuite is to create that collaborative checklist, and we have a few recommendations for how to do that. So one is to you know, group your tasks by account, create a, create a combined Excel checklist and get your team involved in doing this, or use a Google Sheet if you prefer. Um, group tasks by account, group them by priority if it's before the close, during the close, or after the close, so that you can figure out what needs to be done when. Track tasks with a unique task ID for easy reference, and use a T plus or minus deadline system. So, uh, you know, plus five days would mean five days uh, after the close has started. You want to reduce manual upkeep as much as possible and roll this forward every month to make sure that it's getting updated uh, and that people aren't starting to go back and use their own checklists. So um, you can do that yourself. You can use Excel to do that. You can use a variety of closed management software to do that. Um, and I'm great. it's great that we have Amy on the webinar today because there are some huge benefits to using a collaborative closed checklist for your team, especially uh, teams that are dispersed. So Amy, I'm wondering, um, what was it like, uh, what were you doing before you had this collaborative checklist um, and using Flowcast, and you know, what's, what's it like now, and, and what would have been some of the benefits for your team? Okay, um, like you said, we were using um, four different Excel spreadsheets for um, checklists and reconciliations. Um, and this was my biggest headache. People would never update them. They had duplicate items. Um, it was never, it was not accurate. Um, so go, going into Flowcast, this was my biggest um, reason why I chose Flowcast. Um, so it was actually really easy to um, consolidate all of my checklists into one, and then the import process in the Flowcast is really easy. Um, but now I, can, I always know where my staff is in the closed process, and I always know who I can go um, talk to about a task not being done. So this is really the visibility and accountability is the biggest thing that I like the best about Flowcast. Awesome. That's great to hear. And for those of you who are interested in seeing what that looks like, this is a screenshot of the checklist page in Flowcast. And you can see that we've got, you know, it looks like a typical checklist you might have, but with the addition of uh, pictures for the assignees, we've got sign-offs, completed dates, you have a place where you can add notes, all of that great stuff. Um, Amy, I want to keep you uh, here for another question, which is, um, well, now that you've got that collaborative close checklist, you're seeing some benefits. Um, one of the ways that we recommend folks uh, improve is, is using that checklist in combination with a post-closed debrief. So 
you know, how are you uh, or how are the other managers on your team, you know, inspiring continuous improvement with using the checklist? We really, we do do a post-close, um, really specifically around individuals that aren't meeting deadlines and trying to understand why. Um, you know, that's really what our post-close debrief um, is really all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it, it really, I guess the takeaway is like it doesn't, it doesn't help if you have a system for tracking stuff if you're not actually holding people accountable, right? Right. <laughs> so you got to make sure that you, you, you do that. Um, another tip that, uh, that I've, I've heard folks using is creating a closed Gantt chart, right? So once you have this checklist in place, uh, you actually know what day different tasks are going to be completed and when they start. Um, you can create a simple Gantt chart just a, a visual representation of the areas of the close and, and um, what needs to get done by when. And if you want to improve your close, you know, let's say we're on day six here, and that's when we normally issue our reporting packet, but we want to move that to five. Well, that means we've got to shift the reporting a day earlier. But if we do that, we've got to shift accounts receivable, inventory, and, and fixed assets. We've got to move that a day earlier. Well, there's some, some ways we can do that, right? Well, we can, we've, we've got some availability uh, in these teams to move tasks earlier, and perhaps we can reallocate staff and we can combine tasks that happened on different days. And with a few little changes like that, suddenly our, our close is a whole day faster, which is a pretty significant improvement going from six to five days. And if your close is longer, if it's a 15-day close, uh, you might be able to cut it in half by doing this sort of analysis. So um, that's it for the process section of this webinar, and now we, we are on to our next polling question. What is your favorite way to streamline your month and close? There are no right or wrong answers here. Is it using NetSuite's period close checklist? Do you like to use memorized transactions, imports, and suite approvals for journal entries in NetSuite? Do you like to close the books and lock the period correctly in NetSuite? What about using a collaborative close checklist? conducting post-close debriefs with the team. If you're a person that likes meeting with people, then you'll love those cl post-close debriefs. And finally, uh, creating a close Gantt chart. And we've got a variety of answers coming in, but I think I know which one is going to be the favorite. Going once, going twice. All right, I'm closing the poll now. And if you didn't get a chance to put in your answer, don't worry because there are five uh, questions on this webinar. You, you only need to answer three, so there's going to be a couple more coming up. And it looks like the vast majority of you think that a collaborative close checklist is your favorite way to streamline the month and close. Great to hear. And I also really like the second choice, uh, the second place answer, uh, memorized transactions, imports, and suite approvals for journal entries. There's no reason why we should be recreating journal entries from scratch. So thank you, Paul, for sharing that. Absolutely. All right. On to documentation part three. I'm going to go a little bit quickly through this section because I want to make sure that we have plenty of time for the reconciliations and Q&A at the end. So pardon me if I kind of breeze through this a little bit. Um, standardizing your templates. So uh, why is it important to standardize? Team alignment is really important. You're going to get a consistent streamlined preparer process. Uh, as I mentioned, um, it allows you to shift folks in and out of roles more easily when they're using the same templates, accelerates your review, you reduce errors, and it's simplified for auditors. And Flowcast was founded by two auditors. So they got frustrated with seeing lots of different templates of reconciliations that aren't exactly the easiest to understand as a reviewer. And so one of the first things that they did when they started uh, Flowcast is create some templates for our customers so that they can uh, have a more streamlined process. So we've got three best practice Excel templates that are customizable to any closed process. You can download those in the upper right of your screen, uh, or you can visit for more resources and these templates, flowcast.com slash resources. Here's an example. This is accrued expenses. Um, it may be a little bit difficult to see on your screen, but the, the key is, and you can go ahead and download the template, is that at the top of the schedule, we have the purpose and we have common items to consider. And it's a small change to a template, but it makes a big difference when uh, you, you actually tell people, why are we doing this reconciliation? What is the guidance that applies? Uh, where can you go look for more information? 
And then under common items to consider, this is something that you should update or have your team update uh, every time they do the close is, you know, what are those things that they keep having to deal with every single month so that it doesn't get missed? The last thing that I'm going to point out to you on these templates is the uh, letters in red and this hashtag, hashtag FQ-2010. Um, this is a big difference between Flowcast Close Management Software and other solutions uh, that really appealed to me as an accountant, and this is why we give out Excel templates. We don't think that you should have to abandon Excel to streamline your process and to get your close more efficient. So we layer on top of Excel. So you put that hashtag code and the account number in your workbook, and then we can look into the cloud storage that we've synced with, uh, and we can tie that to your trial balance in NetSuite. So um, you'll see here's my NetSuite value, here's my reconciliation value. When you roll forward every month, if the value uh, matches, then you don't have to reconcile. It can be automatically reconciled and rolled forward. If there's a difference, we'll show you. You can even set thresholds so that you only have to update the work paper if it's over a certain dollar amount, for instance. So really cool feature. Now, in terms of uh, where do you keep all of these documents, we have uh, also a best practice for storage. Um, a lot of teams, they like to store things uh, by staff person, at least in small accounting teams, uh, because, you know, that's everybody has their own folder on the network drive, and that's where they go. Well, not the best situation for auditors or a third party or somebody that, that doesn't know your team, because they're not going to know where to find stuff. So we recommend the following folder structure. Uh, and this is what Flowcast will do automatically for you. So uh, it goes entity or business unit. So if you have multiple entities, you have a folder for each of them. Then you have the year, month, and then the account or process. And that's where you store your, actually all of your documents, the supporting docs, reconciliations, policies and procedures, et cetera. Benefits of this, accelerates your review process, easy to access. You don't have to spend so much time on PVC requests because you can just export an entire month or year for your auditor, uh, and it's really easy to train people because you can just tell them, go look at last year, easy to find, it's in the same spot that this year's is. Now, if you want to uh, have a good folder st structure uh, and you want to also enable access to your team across multiple offices, which is becoming more and more the trend, you're going to need to switch to cloud storage. And these are five that we recommend that we integrate with here at Flowcast. Uh, and they have all gotten really good. If you're still using a server, um, this is probably the easiest thing that you can do to speed things up and to make uh, life easier for your team is, is move off of that local server and go to cloud. It's all very secure, biometric security at these data centers, um, armed guards. You d probably um, do not have that at your office. And lastly, and this is where I would love to get Amy back into the conversation, is getting review notes out of email, right, uh, or stored in Word documents. I mean, we see all sorts of, of crazy things going on. Um, so, Amy, uh, what, what were you doing uh, with review notes before you implemented Flowcast, and um, how has that changed how, how your team works? Uh, the biggest review notes were um, provided via uh, phone calls, usually, or email, um, which was an issue uh, for the auditors because we had no audit trail. So I, I really like the review notes. I, um, you know, I like the fact that I'll put a comment in and it immediately gets emailed to whoever's responsible for the task, and um, then I can go and sign off and say that the um, the note was um, closed. It just gives me a good visibility um, and makes me more comfortable that I've checked everything. Um, in regards to you know reviewing an actual document or a task. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, no reason that folks should be doing um, review notes via email. So much better to have it all in one place where it's searchable by everybody. Thank you, Amy. All right, that brings us to our fourth polling question. What is Flowcast's recommended folder structure for the financial close? Is it entity account process year month? staff person year month account process, entity year month account process, or year entity process month? Answers are starting to roll in, and I'm just going to check the time real quick to make sure that we are on target. It's about 44 minutes in. We're going to roll through this last section, and then we will do um, 
a bit of Q&A, so I think we're right on track. So uh, if you have been thinking of questions, please feel free to put those into the Q&A and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure to get to at least a few of those. Okay, I'm closing the poll, going once, going twice. And 83% of you uh, got it right. Flowcast recommended folder structure is entity year, month, and then account process. All right, the last section of our presentation today is streamlining your reconciliations. And now I'm going to hand things off to Paul. Paul, the floor is yours. Take it away. All right, thanks, Blake. So I'm going to talk about a, a few features and some controls within NetSuite that will help us streamline reconciliation and maintain data, data quality and control. Uh, really, at the end of the day, uh, the best method for ensuring a clean and efficient account reconciliation in NetSuite is to get yourself out of the external spreadsheets that you might be doing those reconciliations and into the system. So the Reconcile Account Statement feature uh, will help us do exactly that. This feature was recently in introduced into NetSuite uh, in version 2017.2. So as you can see on your screen, a component of that feature is the Account Reconciliation Summary Portlet. It's found on the NetSuite homepage, and it basically provides insight into your Treasury management-related accounts. So it contains a real-time snapshot of the GL account balances for your cash and credit cards. You can see when the account was last reconciled. You can see your bank statement balance. You can view the number of records that need to be matched between the bank statement and the general ledger in NetSuite. And then we can navigate to key reports and other features directly from, from this portlet. So here's the primary page of the Reconcile Account Statement feature. So when you Im import your account statements into NetSuite, uh, you can efficiently match and reconcile the transactions on the same page without using an Excel spreadsheet. So you can see here the reconcile, the reconcile Account Statement page shows a side-by-side -side list of the imported bank statement transactions uh, and the GL transactions within NetSuite. So now you can filter the list and then select one or more records from each list to match the rows. Um, there's also an intelligent match, uh, transaction matching feature uh, that identifies a match for an imported statement. Uh, if there's a general ledger transaction in NetSuite, that meets the criteria that's been set up for, against the matching rules. And those matching rules can be uh, the defaulted NetSuite rules that, you're, that you use, or you can, again, you can configure custom matching rules uh, for your different accounts. Uh, really, the account reconciliation tool saves the work, uh, so it saves the work for you as you're going. So as you're doing your account reconciliation in this window, it's saving that work, and that enables you to come back uh, and reconcile uh, your account and complete the task at your convenience. So you can be doing this throughout the, uh, uh, the period. So I'd like to talk a little bit about um, improving data quality and, and, and uh, mitigating the risk in terms of, of your, your data. Uh, certain ways to do that, in addition to the reconciliation tool that we just looked at within NetSuite, um, are, uh, are shown on the screen there. So we can, we can uh, institute transaction review and approval workflow. We talked a little bit about approval workflow and using the NetSuite engine a little bit earlier. We can have alerts uh, for postings to accounts where typical users should not be posting. So if we're processing a journal entry and we're hitting the system or the control accounts like AP, AR, and other uh, system-related accounts, um, we can, uh, we can generate alerts for those or save searches for those and ultimately send emails or escalate uh, the fact that that's happening. And then we can set alerts for certain transaction types, maybe where the, that have dollar amount criteria. So if the dollar amount is greater than X for a given transaction type, we may want to know about that. Uh, regular review of key reports and transaction types. Um, you know, for example, if we see a trend of correcting entries, certainly need to ask ourselves why that trend is happening and what within the process can be done to, uh, to help us reduce the number of correcting entries that may be processed within the system. Obviously, ensuring it, uh, user permissions are set properly, like we talked about a little bit earlier. And then a periodic process review and refresher user training. 
um, always comes in handy just to make sure the users are um, up to par and uh, understand the latest functions and features of NetSuite. So there are also some data classification controls or data controls that we can institute. One of them within NetSuite is an account and segment combination. Um, so we can we can restrict the use of those combinations of the accounts and the and the segments by user role. So in this example that you see, if we selected the marketing department in this field, the use of the account is really a is really restricted to users that have the permission to access the marketing department. So that's one of the more granular examples of how we can we can leverage NetSuite to ensure that um, uh, that we're maintaining data quality. Uh, but it is something that certainly we can create a matrix and then through configuration uh, push that matrix into the system and really control our postings to different account and segment combinations. Uh, we can also limit or monitor outstanding transactions or items. Um, so again, through the use of safe searches, we talked about those a little bit earlier, we can, we can configure safe searches with conditional formatting. You can see there multiple rows within that safe search um, are, are the color orange. So maybe we set a criteria for uh, a PO safe search where you know, the PO is greater than 10 days uh, beyond its expected receipt date that shows up as a certain color within our, uh, within our safe search, or orders that haven't shipped um, in, in the expected time frame, um, maybe those also show up on a safe search in a different color. So uh, lots of great ways to, again, leverage safe searches and then alerts off of those safe searches um, to escalate the issue um, if we need to do that. Obviously, you know, most of you know safe searches can be exposed on your home page. So the minute you log into NetSuite, uh, you might have some of these alerting you immediately through uh, their conditional formatting. So Blake, those are just a few of the features and functions that uh, we can use in NetSuite to promote data control and quality uh, for efficient reconciliation and then also minimize the risk of, of bad data within our system. Great to know. Uh, I, I love the idea of making sure that data gets uh, you know, recorded correctly the first time and not having to go back and, and change it later. Uh, those rules are really, really nifty. So thank you. Using close management software um, ties together all elements of the month end close. I think you've heard plenty about the benefits of it. Um, I'm not going to say any more. And Paul, I want to thank you so much um, for joining us today. I imagine that some of our uh, attendees might be interested in contacting you to find out, you know, can you help us with our NetSuite implementation or, or Flowcast or you know, wh wh what do you offer and how can people get in touch with you? What should they know? Yep, we'd love to hear from you. For 23 years, uh, we've been in the business of delivering uh, what we call value-based solutions across the Microsoft, Oracle, NetSuite, and Salesforce platforms, uh, the stacks that you see there on the, on the, uh, on the slide. Uh, really, our customers are at the center of everything we do. We aim to understand the business, the goals and objectives, and then become the, your technology partner through uh, the services that you see there, ERP, CRM, collaboration, development, and analytics, uh, and infrastructure service offerings. Uh, we have a large national client base in the mid-market space, and Blake, we're certainly excited to be a part of the Flowcast partnership. Yeah, we're we're really excited to have you um, on the on the partner page and uh, and have you join, doing this webinar. Thank you so much. So that brings us to our uh, Q and A. I'm going to launch our bonus polling question right now. Let us know if you are interested in attending another Flowcast webinar featuring featuring NetSuite knowledge. Um, please. Uh, we, we will take no offense if you want something else. We'd love to know um, what you are interested in doing. We do these webinars on a quarterly basis or even more frequently. That will really help us. So uh, let's get to the questions. So um, here's a question for Amy, um, uh, or, or let me know if, you, if, if this is better for somebody else. But uh, I, I figured this would be great for you, given that you have a, a remote team. So somebody is asking them, for a small company with a finance team of three people, you know, are all these processes relevant? Sometimes it's faster to solve things online uh, or face-to-face. -face. So I guess, you know, 
my question for you is how do you decide when it's best to do something with collaboration software, with closed management software versus having a meeting, uh, you know, getting on a Zoom call or meeting face to face or bringing people into the office? Well, because most of my team, you know, half of them is their East Coast, um, bringing people in face to face isn't really an option. And the time difference makes it challenging too. I'm doing my review you know, at 5 or 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, and it's 8 o'clock there already. So I like using a software that I can do my review notes, and it goes to their email so they can look at it first thing when they come in, and then hopefully have the stuff answered by the time I come in. Um, and so many people have so many meetings and are so busy that face-to-face -face for a team of 30, um, a larger team doesn't necessarily make sense. Makes makes sense. It seems like more and more, uh, it's just not even really an option, right? We have to figure out how to work remotely. Thank you for that. Um, let's see. It looks like we have a few questions for Paul. Um, one of those questions is, oh, and I'm going to go ahead and close this poll now. We'll see the results. Looks like uh, uh, over uh, almost 75% of you would like to see more NetSuite content. So, Paul, hey, that's great. Uh, maybe we'll have to get you back on here and, and do some more content. Um, yeah, that'd be wonderful. So um, here's a question for you about NetSuite. Um, if you have only purchased a very limited number of users with NetSuite, what's the best approach to use NetSuite in uh, in terms of closing the books and putting controls in place such as the audit trail? So they're trying to cut costs uh, or keep costs lower by not having too many users. Do you have any recommendations in that regard? Uh, yeah, so I think when you, when you talk about limited users, um, you know, we, we looked at earlier the there's a tool within NetSuite that analyzes user role differences. Um, when organizations are limited in terms of the number of users that they have, um, obviously everybody's got to wear more hats. And that's happening more and more these days, as, as Amy mentioned. Um, so I think really sitting down and ensuring that you've got a, um, a documented user security and permissions matrix and then getting that configured within the system to optimize everybody's, you're not going to be able to segregate all the duties, right, but you can have some controls in place to make sure that um, you're mitigating risk. So really documenting a good user security matrix and profile and then setting up your security within NetSuite to reflect that and then using the, um, uh, the user role analysis to make sure that you don't have too much overlapping permission and, you know, the uh, there's still distinction between the roles where you need it. That's great. Um, Amy, I know that you have a meeting, so we're going to uh, let you go. Um, and um, Paul, um, if you don't mind sticking around, we'll answer a few more of these questions. So, uh, Amy, thank you so much for uh, joining the webinar today. All right. Thanks, Blake. Hopefully I was helpful. Oh, yeah, definitely, I'm sure. Uh, based on the feedback we're getting here, absolutely. So I uh, hope to talk to you again soon and, and see you at uh, Sweet World. Okay, thanks, everyone. Thanks. So, Paul, um, let's see, here's a question. Somebody wants to know what is the best way to use um, – oh, no, that's not one. That's not the one I wanted. Um, oh, yes. Are the reconciliation modules in NetSuite Extra? Do you have to pay more for that, or are those already included? No, those are actually part of the core functionality of, of NetSuite. So you buy the core license, you get that, uh, you get the features that we looked at today. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the reconcile account statement feature where you can actually upload your statement uh, activity is a pretty recent addition. So that's 2017.2, so it would have been introduced um, towards the end of last year. Uh, but adoption on that is is growing rapidly in terms of what we see because it is it is such a great tool in terms of being able to match, uh, um, use automatic matching for transactions and just make that whole process a little more efficient. Yeah, it looks, it looks great. I haven't used it myself, but it looks really great. Ellen has a question. Uh, is it possible to create a safe search with conditional formatting? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, we saw one of those a little bit earlier. So that slide that had uh, what looked like a report list with some orange um, orange rows on it, um, really, as most of you know, as NetSuite users, you can create the safe searches. You can pull any, uh, just about any of the content that you want onto that safe search relative to the transaction or the master record or whatever it is you're 
pulling onto the onto it, and and then there's an opportunity to create formulas and and then conditional formatting around the results of that saved search. So that's definitely possible, and it's something that we use all the time. That's great. Let's see a few more questions coming in here, and then we'll let everybody go. And by the way, if you do have to drop off, um, you should now see that CP certificate in your certification module if you have answered three of the uh, polling questions and viewed 40 minutes of the webinar. Um, and then filled out that course evaluation. Don't forget, you have to fill out the course evaluation. I believe that the checklist item is past test. That means the, um, uh, the course evaluation. So you fill that out, then your certification icon should appear. Click that, download that to your um, uh, desktop. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Lynn wants to know, can we continue for an extra three minutes so I can get my CP time? No worries. We'll leave the we leave this open for a few minutes uh, afterwards so that people can complete their uh, course evaluation. So no worries there. Totally understand. She came in a little bit late. Um, Question from Taylor, will Flowcast do this webinar for other accounting programs? Yes, uh, we would love to. We know that we have customers on just dozens of different uh, ERPs, accounting systems. So if you want to hear specific content, let us know uh, what uh, accounting system you're on, and we'll be happy to consider that. Um, let's see, Lynn also had a question. What is the best way to use a multi-location, multi-department shared collaborative checklist? Well. You know, I'm a little bit biased. I'm going to say Flowcast, that's the way to do it. Um, you might be talking about departments outside of accounting and finance. We're actually finding that um, many of our customers, controllers, are inviting folks that are not um, in the accounting team to use Flowcast. Uh, a perfect example is that the accounting team needs to receive reports from outside, say from inventory from warehouse managers and whatnot. Uh, if you've got the user licenses, you can actually add folks into that checklist um, or into your, your application as a user, assign them checklist items, and then even do review notes with them as a way of communicating with them and keeping that all centralized in the application. Um, you can do that in Flowcast. If you're using other project management software, uh, I would highly recommend doing that, getting as much of it as possible into a single place where everyone can see it, and that way you know um, what's going on. So. I'm looking through and I'm seeing some of these questions. I really appreciate you putting them in. They're going to be a little difficult to answer um, on the webinar, so we'll make sure to forward these on over to Paul or to the Flowcast team as appropriate. Um, and I see some of you are having a few issues you know, with your um, CPE, that sort of thing. So uh, we'll be sure to stay on, answer those uh, questions. I'm going to leave the webinar open. I'm not going to end the webcast so that you have an opportunity to ask that Q&A and, and get that sorted out, and our team will help out. Um, on the back end. Um, and that's all of our time for today. So again, um, we'll do our best to answer your Q&A um, asynchronously via email. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. And sounds like uh, the attendees are asking that we do more NetSuite content. So uh, I look forward to collaborating with you hopefully in the future. Yeah, great news. Thank you, Blake. Appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. Talk to you soon. Bye.